All right, welcome to the September 24th Aries Cloud Asian Python Maintainers Meeting. Akapai Maintainers Meeting, I should call it. I'll have to refix that. Um, few issues to go over. Um, PRs and things, um, handling PyPy and um, GitHub uh, container registry artifacts during the transition. I did not have this on the agenda, so I'll get rid of that. Um, and then any updates we've got on things that are going on. <clears throat> Reminder that this is a Linux Foundation LF decentralized trust meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the LFDT code of conduct, which is now linked in this part of the agenda. Um, anything else we want to talk about on this? I think we'll go through a bunch of things, so we'll just go through. Um, <clears throat> start with the new maintainers. We're good with that. And <clears throat> I think we've got a few. Excellent. Okay, so I will, right after this meeting, add the new maintainers. Any comments? Going once. Excellent. Um, dealing with artifacts and naming, um, any flashes of inspiration on the name? Is it going to be Akapai? I think it is, right? It would be nice not to have to change it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that brings us to Aries Cloud Agent and that... Uh, the, um, um, sorry, the, uh, folder in the repository that contains all the source code. Um, do we leave it as is? Do we change it to Akapai? Any comments on that? Uh, again, this is a developer, um, convenience question. Is there any sort of things we should follow? It, it also impacts the package name that gets published yeah, to Pi. Right. So, um, I mean, generally people are going to be interacting with with the Docker images as opposed to the Python package directly. Yeah, but I think it would still make sense to to have that be changed to Akpi. Probably is is my vote. Just Akpi. Yeah. Um, and the timing of that in parallel with the move. I think that's all done with GitHub Actions. <clears throat> so there'd have to be a PR to change that. Yeah. So what I was thinking <clears throat> um, on those lines is I was thinking we do a PR that we that sort of has all the things we think need to happen before we do the move. We we do the move and then merge the PR and then clean up anything behind it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. We have to change the actual project name in the PyPy or Pi project TOML file. I'm pretty sure okay. that's how it gets pub. It just uses that name to publish it. Um, yeah, there's a couple different publish actions. There's one for the GHCR too. They're yeah, so let's written. let's start with this one. So, is there a way in PyPy to change the name so that it redirects people to the Akapai um, package, or or do we and, keep the same pattern? Can't you give like an alternate name? Isn't that a thing on on PyPy? I, I thought. I'm thinking of seeing this. So Aries Cloud Agent could become an alternate name. Uh, I don't know if someone knows. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure. Um, okay. I suspect this is similar to what it will be to for the images, which means there's a second set of images with a different name. So there will be a cutoff. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and pardon my, the ignorance is like, is the renaming something required by the move or are we just doing it as a kind of like contextually for reorganization? Like is it is it is a renaming dictated by the fact that we're moving to an OWF? It's not dictated. So the repo has to change, uh, and actually, I guess I should highlight that repo will be Akapai. and that's it. And so the idea is we would have the Akapai repo, and then. Uh, the various associated ones would be Akapai Dash. Hmm. As in Akapai plugins, Akapai tools, Akapai controllers. Um. Does that affect like because I know some things were like Aries dash something. So yeah. is there is that is there gonna be to be some kind of filtering between what is like shared and what is only like if I um thinking like for example the Aries OCA bundle, right? Something like that. Um it's not um, really an Akapai thing, it's more like a bifold. Yeah. 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 I, I mean that would be a secondary and we can decide on it um as we go like that's one i wouldn't rush to change yeah um ones where there's a, a physical tie yeah um that's what wh where we would change i did some quick googling and asked yeah. GPT about the PyPy question. <laughs> um, so there is no way to do a redirection uh, in, in PyPy. Um, okay. So we, we would have to upload a new package under a new name. Uh, we can leave deprecation messages in the old package that like yeah. when people use it, it you know, we'd print out like a, a warning that tells them to use the new package. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll have to be kind of a, a manual process. There's not going to be any magic tools provided for us by PyPy for that. Okay. So would that mean we'd leave Aries Cloud Agent as is with like a new release with a deprecation notice and start a new project? Is that what the... Right. Yeah, I think something along yeah. those lines. Okay. So that means we need to do one more release with in from Hyperledger with the deprecation notice. Is it deprecation or archived? Deprecation, I would think, and we're pointing it to the new one of what, what will be the new one. Um, the readme is also what is what gets published to the the PyPy thing. Yeah. So in the deprecation process, we'll want to be okay. sure to include you know text on the readme itself as well. To exactly. Point to the yeah. Place. But yeah. Yeah. Is there a package already called Akapai? <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wasn't there something similar with the? Oh, there is. Ah, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? That's too funny. What is it? Python bindings for Aval data. I kept lib to. Oh, Maybe I can buy like uh, with a dash. Uh, uh, like we could do with a dash. It's just, uh, you know, people will just need to be careful not to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> Akapai client. <laughs> we just do Akapai agent. Yeah. 
It's kind of a bit like ray yeah. but. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so what does that change things to? So, um, whoops, wrong one. Well, I think it makes sense because then the repo is called iCapi, and then there's going to be a folder called iCapi Agents. And yeah, it's, it's kind of yeah. Um, just like you're saying, wasn't there something similar with the Anon Creds pip package, and then? After a while, it it cause at the beginning it was like an on creds RS like pip, and then it got just to an on creds or I I don't know the details. Okay. Um. Okay, so repo. Okay, does that make sense? So I just added immediate updates to the README to begin to document the process to announce the move. And then I was thinking we would create a file like move to OWF dot md that maintains that contains the guidance about the move all of that will get published immediately to acapi.org and um, be visible so like a file for people that have deployments the yeah. steps they should take and here's yeah. the guidance you should do here's the you know best practices and so on yeah, and probably invite them to raise issues, you know, if yes. there's things that are not covered. Exactly. Um, so we need to do a release and get the deprecation messages in. Um, and we need a release anyway, which we have to talk about in a bit. <clears throat> Um, okay, G GHCR, we simply just start publishing a new version. We do one more version. We put a uh, – is there – what's the documentation around GHCR? Just to be, do people ever go there, or do they – oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, this also pulls from the readme, I believe, if you scroll down a bit. So Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll update in here. Um, okay. So README has the guidance. But we won't keep releasing to here. We'll simply release to uh, gchr.io slash open wallet. Is that what we're going to do? That's what it would be, yeah, huh? if yeah. the report changes. Okay. So I don't think we should do this. No. I I think yeah. that'd be compl complicated. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well not complicated, but confusing. How does this interact with like LTS stuff? <laughs> question yeah because if, oh, if we've we've committed it, oh, to shit. long term long term support for like 011x and 012x so far right and shit. we haven't yet committed to a 1.0 long term release but being able uh, to publish packages at the original uh, yeah 
goddamn long term support. Um, well, I think can you it could, just you could go back to the tag and create images from there in the new location, and just the long term support would just be oh, that's true. an open wallet. Yeah, something. So they wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily automatically get the updates by continuing to use the old um, the old package name and tag. They would still have to manually, you know, yeah. update. I guess. But it would still be the same, quote unquote, release. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll probably want to document that. Okay. As well. For LTS, we will keep publishing to this GHCR. Because it because the repo name is not tied to it, we can call it whatever the hell we want, right? The that tag is, we put on this. No, the, repo, be the repo name is is based on the organization repo. Yeah. Okay, so this is required. Yeah, like if we change it to OWF Akapai, it's going to be slash OWF slash Akapai. <clears throat> okay, which comes back to then. What we do is we turn this into a fork, or or we just is that <laughs> is that really what it says in the long term support? Like we'll maintain this specific image. Like does does the migration really affect it? Like we'll we'll still maintain these version. Like the code's still gonna be there. We can just I guess republish the version. Yeah, well, what we could do is just like. Pull the LTS images from the Hyperledger container registry and manually push them to our, like to the OWF mm -hmm. renamed. So they start basically, we have like the old Aries Cloud Agent Python LTS and the new Akapai LTS that are the same. It's just a name difference. And then we keep publishing on one. So it looks okay, like so... the, the container images don't get transferred with the, with the move mm -hmm. at all. And it's just, I, I'm afraid we would lose them completely if we fork another repo that has a and similar name. Was LTS previous to version one or it started with version one? No, previous to. Mm. Okay. Sorry. How about this? I, I think we do do that. Dude, I said do do. Oh my God. Um, I suggest we do uh, this, which is we for or sorry, we move the repo, and then instead of using the redirect, we immediately fork Akapai at the point we moved it, and then immediately update the repo with a redirect message and screaming notes in the thing and saying this is only being retained for LTS purposes. That would allow us to keep publishing to PyPy and allow us to keep publishing to GHCR. We just will only do that for an 11 or 12 if we need to. Makes sense. We okay with that? Okay, I'll document that. Move the repo. Create a fork. It's in the old name.
Okay. Which comes back to this idea that we um, we create a PR to change everything we can think of so that we know what we're going to do. Then we move to OWF. Then we merge the PR and then clean up because that fits nicely with this. Um, move to create a fork at the old location below and then merge the PR. Does that sound right? Is there a way to prevent new issues from being created on this fork and to tell people like if they have issue to open them on the WF yep. one? We can set settings yeah, to that. Good, good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and that lets us keep, so that solves the PyPy and and there we put all the redirect notices in starting now and say it's going to be moved soon. Here's what it's going to be called. Begin your, your movement and then let's get going on this. Okay. And then documentation is is just what I said above. We put a screaming letters at the top of the readme. We document it, <clears throat> update Discord, update mailing lists, and so on. Um, plugins. So we need a similar move. There's no artifacts from the plugins, correct? Or are they? No, you'd still just install it from the readme. Okay. Yeah. So all we're going to do then is uh, we're, we'll do a similar process of creating a PR in preparation for the move, move it, and then um, merge that PR once we've moved it. Does that make sense, Jamie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm because you know so much about plugins. I'm sort of going to lean on you to. I'm assuming you you're going to take the lead on plugins and and coming up with a way to do it smoothly. Yeah, I think it's just mostly documentation after you. Yeah, and it's just mostly mechanical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to, to speak it out loud, the reason it's okay for us to go ahead and move without doing a ton of prep work for the plugin site is because the fact that we're using GitHub, like uh, Git dependencies for the plugins right now, Mm -hmm. GitHub will automatically do the redirection for us, right? So oh, it, I see. Like it's it isn't Got necessarily it. a concern for people who are using it because of the redirection. I, I'm hoping at least Does that sound right. Um. Yeah, I haven't thought about this a lot. So, um, I need to think about it more, but I don't think it should be too. Like you. If you want to, we'll need to do it at the same time. And if they want like the newest changes in the left to change what repo it's installing from, but otherwise they can just use the, the Hyperledger one. But anyway, I have to think about it more. I'm like 90% sure the redirect will, will handle it. I've done a lot of repo transfers. I, I, I end up starting a lot of projects on like my personal account and mm -hmm. then move them somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and I often uh, don't update like the get URLs that I have for my local CLI and stuff uh, and it everything works. Um, and I assume the same would be true if you're doing a git clone as part of like a pip install or, or you know, poetry install. Yeah. Uh, I think the redirection should should handle it. So, okay. Yes, the the question is if we go with the fork plan and the fork gets renamed to be named exactly the same as what the repo is now, which I thought that was the idea to keep things 
consistent? Would that break all of the redirections? Probably yes. So no. that's true for like the Akapai repo, but for plugins, I don't think we need to do the Yeah, yeah, for the Akapai repo, not the plugins. But it's going to become Akapai plugins, not Aries Akapai plugins. So we're going to drop the Aries dash in front. No, what what that, I meant was that like change anything, right? It's yeah, still no, going to do what I meant was like for the uh, for the Aries Cloud Agent Python repo that we have now under Hyperledger. Right. If the idea was to move it and then fork it back, keeping the Aries Cloud Agent Python repo, that would break the redirects because basically yes. you would have a new target. Yes. I get what okay. you mean. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But this one, we're not doing that. We're just going no, to no, no. allow the GitHub repo to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yes. I mean, that is the downside of, of doing the fork back, but I think the fork back is necessary. And if we just put in big loud letters, it's going to be a fully operational repo just locked in at the latest version and then only changes if we have to for LTS purposes. Okay. <clears throat> um, So I think we start working on this. I can do the README stuff, but um, uh, we'll have to figure out what else we can do, uh, start the PR. But I think the first thing is is a new release. Is First thing is a README update and announcements. Um, next is a final HL Aries release PR to make changes and move to, I guess, PR to prepare changes and then a move. Okay. Um, and it could be a couple of PRs. We might have one that's just a documentation one and others that are, are more uh, technical. Okay, um, can we take a little longer? Um, Emiliano, are you okay that we're gonna miss stand up? And I'd like to get through a couple more things. Yeah, I'll, I'll just drop a note and see if the other people can yeah. deal with it. Okay, sorry about that, but I think this is worth it. Um, Remove the connection protocol. Um, do we do so? First question before the move or after? Uh, I would say probably before. Okay. I, I feel just reason is it weird to do the move with a feature and remove it immediately? I think. Uh... Yeah, I'm worried the move is just going to be too complicated if. They have to do, yeah. Okay. Change all this stuff, like, mm. yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do this one immediately. Uh, what's the next version? One point one. It's what I think. I assume. Do we have to go to? Yeah, well, I think it's. Technically a breaking change, so I wasn't sure how we're yeah. doing stuff like that. I don't think it should be a major it change. Can't, but... It can't be 01. It arguably could be 2, but I don't want it to be 2. So I would like 1.1. 1, 1. 1. Are we good with that? Yeah, I I am. I think okay. that works. Got a should thumbs we, up from Daniel as well. Should we also include... Um moving issue credential and present proof out uh v1 versions of those protocols out in the same version yeah do we have time I, I to get think... that done or does does anyone have time to work on that so I, I think the level of effort required to do that transition um especially as compared to the connection protocol one i think the level of effort is pretty low um I think we can almost lift the entire just issue credential protocol itself out like wholesale, and that would almost be good enough. Um, Does require creating the plugin and and doing the testing? Yes. No. no, no does it? Yes. 
because you're just removing, right? So well, we can move the test that exists in in the Akapai repo at the same time, but just making sure testing is passing on the other end, I think, is is necessary. Yeah. 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 But if we're just removing issue credential present proof v1, just remove the associated test. The but maybe I'm just unaware about it. it might affect other things, but that sounds like uh um so in order to make it backwards compatible, or, or you have to give a path to people to keep using these. And therefore you have to document that the way you do that is you use this plugin. Do, do we? I think so. And especially if it's like isn't the point of LTS is that you know if they want these features they well, just keep true. using those version and because I think that's just like uh we're not really removing it we're just moving them to a plugin otherwise oh I don't know that that's yeah I, I I don't use these very much so like I'm not in a good place to to say but the idea is to make people move forward to issue v2 there's there's still a I can speak for like the VC gov kind of like hosted services. There's still like quite a few consumers of that protocol and, and pushing mm -hmm. them all out of it at once is a bit complicated. So that's why we right. wanted to offer the backwards compatibility. Right, right, right. Sometime. Right. Yeah. Not for like a long time, but for you know yeah. some iterations, potentially, if necessary. Um, is there uh, a I think that's getting into two more work, but would there be a way for like, let's say present proof V2 to understand a present proof V1 request? Does that make sense? Uh, it'd be effectively holding on to the same technical debt. That yeah. Yeah. Get rid of. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay. mm -mm. We might, we um, might okay. have to consider pros and cons very well. I, I think I, I agree that move, Removing these deprecated protocols before we do the first release in the new location would be ideal, just so that we don't yeah. hold on too much to this stuff. But yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we can split the work. Daniel, would you be able or an DCO be able to do the removal and maybe creation of the plugin? And then BCGov will take on the testing of the plugin and tweaking? Yeah, I think I can do that. How about that? Division of labor. <laughs> you're saying you're trying to get this in the next release or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll create issues for those two. Okay. That's the plan. And and then all of these things will go into the next release. Are we considering that the same release as our final Hyperledger release? Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I, I Jamie was raising the other day, and quite rightly, that we're pretty close to needing a release soon. We've got a lot of stuff in the backlog, so like in on main that isn't in a release. Yeah, it'd just be like like to have a higher release schedule in general. Yeah. Like we don't have to jam all these features into single releases, but maybe it makes a lot of sense to have this in, I guess. But... I, I think it does in that we're pretty close and from what I hear that isn't that much work. So I'm hoping we can go with getting these into a 1.1 and let's sort of gate 1.1 on that, on this. So I, I agree with all those points. Um, the one thing I'm wondering is if it makes sense for us to just go back to the 1.0 release and just do a quick 1.01 and just do like the deprecation notices for that release. Oh, okay. Okay. And just the, uh, okay. You know, so there's there's less churn in, in terms of like what's included in the final hyperledger release. Okay. But we still want 1.1 to be the final hyperledger release. In other words, we take these out before we go to open wallet. I I think as long as we merge 
into the open wallet side before we release, I think we'd have more or less the same effect. Um, I don't think we have to release it in Hyperledger, these removals, um, in order for us to have a clean start in the open wallet foundation, yeah. if that makes sense. Okay. So, um, okay. Immediate release of what we have as 1.01. .01. Merge the connection protocol. We are Remove these, all three will go into the next, to the subsequent release 1.0. So the question is, is which is 101 or 110 the final hyperledger release? My tendency is to think we've got to do this. <sighs> It this th that leaves this one held up too long. This connection protocol will sit until we're ready to move. Well, uh, that's um, I'm not coming across very clear, so I apologize. Okay. But so I think we can do a one dot oh one release. Like I, I think we could do it today. We don't need to include yeah, all the changes exactly. that have been merged since the one dot oh release. We just include the deprecation notices. That's it. Get it out the door. I think we can go ahead and start merging oh. things that we intend to put in the 1.1 re release before the move, but then only do the release uh, once we've hit OWF. Or, or even, I don't know, I, I guess it's it doesn't matter too much whether we release first in, in Hyperledger or not at that point. But I, I think just getting the deprecation releases in makes it so we can go ahead and do the transition over to the OWF stuff without worrying about code changes that are going on at the same time. Right, so you're saying do the work, but do the release after. Is that what I'm hearing? We just decide when to do it. We're gonna do this work. The release will be 1.0. We're just not, it, it could happen in either place. We don't care. Right, that's, that's my feelings at least. Um, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, so does that look right? So immediate release of what we have is 101 with the deprecation notice, merge the connection and remove the other two. All three will go into the subsequent release, either from HL or OWF as we decide. And that'll depend on the progress we make on the other plans for it. Okay. Um, 3246, um, I saw some chatter on that today. This one is way beyond me. I don't have a clue. So what are we doing with it? Is it close enough that we can release? Including, think... can, can we include in 101? Yeah, I... Uh... I think we're in a good place. I know there was question if we should do a scenario integration test. Um, I don't know if it's required for this feature because it's mostly about creating keys, but definitely have scenario integration tests when uh, we'll be using these keys to issue credentials, uh, at which point we can make more of a scenario like this entity issues, this entity verifies, uh, which is going to be my, my next PR I'm going to look at. Merging. Yeah, we um, can do it in a different one. I just, yeah, I just didn't yeah. see how it was. I don't really understand it either. So I just want to make sure it's working properly. Mm -hmm. It seems to be working properly. Um, I'll fully test it uh, to issue credentials. I'll realign my crypto suite GCS 2022 to use these created keys uh, to sign the credentials. Um, from my test so far, uh, I think it will work. Uh, it's able to find the keys. Um, yeah, 
don't know if there was any other comment you had, Daniel, uh, regarding the, the actual feature you see of the, the code. Daniel made some this morning. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I, I read those and I, I, uh, I addressed them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's looking pretty good. I, I, I don't have any doubt that this will end up in, in, um, a very soon release. <laughs> um, okay. I think it's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. Okay. So let's try to finish that off, merge that today and include in 101 because i think you need it as soon as possible right patrick yeah i need this and just the the crypto suite one uh so which is but, which is that you know, uh so the crypto suite one that i'll realign with this is 3181 uh so this just creates two routes to add a proof to a JSON document. So this is not about verifiable credential. You can use it for a verifiable credential, right. but this is just purely that integrity speaking. So that means there won't be data yeah. model validation on the input. It will just add a data integrity proof. If your controller sends a valid credential, it will, you know, the output will be a, a valid verifiable credential. So there's a bit of a sequence I want to do here. So multi-key first, the DI second, and then finally, uh, do the VCDM 2.0 using that work, uh, each one adding incremental work. So the, the one that I really need is the uh, Crypto Suite support, the okay. I support. Um, do you care if it's in a release or just merged? Uh, just merge. It would be nice if it could make its way to traction eventually, but, uh, you know, yeah. that's fine. Uh, okay. You know, we All can right. look then at let's... another release after. Yeah. I, I'm not going to get hung up on, on either 3246 getting in before or not. Um, yeah, let's, that's fine. let's get it finished off. If you do finish it today and, and it gets merged today, if Jamie and, you know, Daniel are happy and, and and willing to merge it, then it'll get into 101. If not, that's okay as well. That's perfect with me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Um all right. Um 3240. Um I don't know if you've had any time to think about this, um, but this idea that, you know, something Patrick, you said last week was um the seed option automatically creates a did solve, but it would be nice if the seed option created um, other did methods. So, um, I, and, and and what would the API look like for the same thing, even if you didn't do it in the startup options and just did it in the via an API call. So interested to know what we do with this. So I typed two responses that I forgot to send. Uh, so I, I think, and my idea is that if it's done on the, to a command line option, I would like to expand more the provisioning phase inside of the startup option and find a way to be able to provision multiple yeah. sort of seed profiles. So you could have like a list of different uh, I don't know if seed is the right way to call it, but yeah, like, exactly. you know, so yeah. I want this seed to be this type of did to use this crypto suite or you know this key yep. type, for example. And I would lean in the provision space. Okay. So I don't know if automatically every provision option makes it into the startup argument as well, uh, but there's already quite a lot in the startup. And this is more like a provisioning thing, right? Because you want to provision your wallets yeah um it so you can use a seed in the api you just need to set wallet and secure i know wallet, right? yeah i know so it's yeah. not yeah. ideal uh i would like to avoid it um i think the system should be robust enough that you can create a key pair without ever seeing the did and that you don't have to worry about losing that key pair, right? There should yeah. be enough backup mechanisms and so on. Um, you know, like even when you create an endorser, when you start your endorser agent, you, you shouldn't really have to see a seed or anything. Like, um, understand it, it's useful, but, you know, if you create your endorser, you know what the did's going to be, and then you just 
use that did. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we want to make using wallet in secure mode a de facto. Uh, I think it can lead to bad practices. I think it makes... I mean, that's why it's there is because it's not good practice to send a private key in an API. Yeah, it just like uh, lessens people concern around the ha seed handling. You know, I find like uh, you don't want seed handling to become this trivial thing. I think it's a very highly sensitive component. Yeah. I think we'd, uh, we'd really struggle if it became part of the API. On the other hand, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, the other I can just create the key without a seed. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know this if that's is like that's a one-time thing, right? Where you don't want to use a controller to create your, like... Well, the controller... When you think about it, the controller sets the parameters. So in a way, it's doing it. But in in something like traction, well, that's not even possible because no, obviously like you can't a... have startup pr parameters for every tenant. So the tenant There's would a... have to have a way to do it. There's an interesting feature that's kind of related to that, and it's called ZCap. So that's like a you delegate some capabilities to a key pair so that someone could send a seed, but the what they would be able to do with that seed is only uh, accessing other function of the agent, right? So this is a... Uh, no, I don't think that's... Not problem. that one. <laughs> uh, so it can be used for, for many things. Uh, I think it's a W3C thing. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, they oh, kind wow. of rename it to web key MS. So it's like you invoke a capability with a key pair. So I, I could see like these invocation to be, you know, you can send your seed to get your key pair to invoke a capability. So that's kind of uh, mm. interesting, but that's like a, a heavier feature to implement. So yeah. But yeah, I think. For that issue specifically, I think it would be interesting to lean in the provisioning parameter options and allow to pass multiple seeds to create multiple profile if there's a need. Mm -hmm. So just to point something out, um, I think this is more or less like a, a toned down import, like wallet import step, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, I, I, uh, I think having like a more structured format for creating the right components within Akapai's wallet might be helpful as opposed to just spamming the seed um, CLI argument for creating yeah, a whole bunch yeah. of things. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because the seed is you like. want you want to provision a wallet with the keeper that you know or that you expect, right? It's like, you know, the keeper in advance. From creating yes. it, so it is sort of an import in some way. And to also call out uh, a point very specifically, um, when generating an ED two fifty five nineteen key, the seed is actually directly used as the private key portion of the public private key pair. So not mm -hmm. only is the seed a sensitive material, it, it literally is like <laughs> private key material. I did not know that. I don't know either. What's like a hex? Like, what do you mean? It's the private key? Like, uh, it's interpreted. I, I think the bytes themselves, as they're coming in, it, are just directly used to generate the 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 key oh, pair from it. Interesting. All right, we're over time, and so let's leave it at that. Um, okay. I'll get to work on on uh read me updates and stuff like that and put a pr in for that we'll plan a release once that's there uh, let's make sure we talk about the in memory wallet next time i think that's a yeah interesting uh thing that we should discuss uh yeah there's also a meeting just so if anyone is interested in this um dave mckay suggested or did some work on evolving Asgard to use um database native encryption rather than um, the encryption that Ascar is doing. 
and um, he and Andrew and possibly Timo are going to meet tomorrow or on Thursday. And if anyone's interested in joining, let me know. I'll add you to the meeting. But the topic is evolving Asgar to use database native encryption versus its own. The it it does may have a security implication, and so it's got to be treated carefully. But if it works, it allows filtering and um, sorting and basically database cursor support while still having encrypted data, which is pretty powerful. So um, we'll see how that goes. But if anyone wants to join that meeting, let me know. Um, definitely like this idea of if if in memory is not part is is its own implementation yeah i would definitely like to see it replaced with just using the magic whatever it's called colon memory or or something like that in for sequel light i'd be a fan all right folks um uh, much appreciated but that was a really useful call and thank you for guiding it with that, we'll stop. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.